Welcome to the Counter Vortex, Resisting Humanity's Downward Spiral, your weekly roundup of underreported global news and views from a radical, dissident left perspective, brought to you by your chief reporter, ranter, and blogger, Bill Weinberg. That would be me. In a statement this week, the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights brought attention to an alarming and urgent situation on the occupied West Bank with multi-layered human rights violations of Palestinians mounting while the world is focused on the greater crisis in Gaza. The statement notes that 132 Palestinians including 41 children, have been killed on the West Bank since the current crisis began on October 7th. Two Israeli soldiers have also been killed. Settler violence, which was already at record levels, has escalated dramatically, averaging seven attacks a day. In more than a third of these attacks, firearms were used, the statement charged. In many of these incidents, Settlers were accompanied by members of the Israeli forces, or the settlers were wearing uniforms and carrying army rifles, raising concerns that armed settlers have been acting with the acquiescence and collaboration of Israeli forces and authorities. Burma's rebel Tang National Liberation Army, TNLA, has taken control of nearly the entire town of Nakam in northern Shan state, besieging the last remaining junta outpost there. The town is located along the Shueli River, a main trade route on the Chinese border. Meanwhile, in Manko, northeast of Nakam, and also located on the border with China, TNLA allies, the Myanmar National Democratic Alliance Army and the Arakan Army, have reportedly captured four junta bases, representing a serious loss of strategic territory for the regime. These rebel armies together make up a force known as the Three Brotherhood Alliance, now emerging as the junta's most formidable military challenge. The Zapatista National Liberation Army, EZLN, indigenous rebel group in southern Mexico, has announced the dissolution of its autonomous municipalities in the mountains and jungle of Chiapas state. A statement signed by Zapatista leader, Subcomandante Moises, said the decision was taken after a long and profound critical and self-critical analysis. The Zapatista rebel autonomous municipalities, overseen by rotating good government juntas, have been maintained by the Zapatistas since their initial uprising in 1994. Moises said the future communiques will describe the reasons and processes involved in taking this decision, as well as what new structure of Zapatista autonomy will be put in place. The communique did, however, mention a new pressure in the growing power of disorganized crime cartels in Chiapas, a reference to the narco gangs seeking to control the entire border strip with Guatemala. Sudan's Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, RSF, are ousting the army from military bases across western Darfur region, leading to fears the country will split in a similar way to neighboring Libya, which is ruled by rival governments. Even as the RSF has engaged in talks with the army in the Saudi Arabian city of Jeddah, the group has launched attacks in the capitals of three of Darfur's five states, leading to mass displacement and large civilian casualties. Last month, 
It took full control over the capitals of South Darfur and Central Darfur, while last week it seized the main army base in El Jenena, capital of West Darfur. Over a thousand people from the Masalit ethnic group were reportedly killed by the RSF and allied militia fighters during the West Darfur takeover, which may amount to the worst civilian atrocity since Sudan's current war erupted in April. RSF leaders are now threatening to seize El Fasher in North Darfur, which has been a safe haven in recent months and has attracted hundreds of thousands of displaced people. Three Palestinian human rights groups, Al-Haq, Al-Mezan Center for Human Rights, and the Palestinian Palestinian Center for Human Rights filed a lawsuit with the International Criminal Court this week asking for an investigation into war crimes by Israel. The submission accuses Israel of war crimes including genocide and incitement to genocide in the context of the bombardment of the Gaza Strip. The submission follows mounting allegations of Israeli war crimes by international human rights groups, including the use of toxic white phosphorus on civilians and attacks on medical services. <clears throat> Iraq has taken in 192 families from Syria's al Hol camp that, was, that houses persons accused of having links to the Islamic State, or ISIS, a total of 780 individuals were returned to Iraq and will be placed in al Jada Center for Community Rehabilitation in Nineveh province. The families are to remain at al Jada camp until they are given clearance from the Interior Ministry to return to their homes and issued identification documents. el Hal camp, overseen by the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces, is located in northeast Syria's Hasaka province and houses over 50,000 supposedly ISIS-linked persons. And finally, <clears throat> this week's Counter Vortex podcast. In both the United States and United Kingdom, Progressive politicians have been censured for use of the slogan, Palestine will be free from the river to the sea. Much media reportage has simply accepted portrayals of the slogan as inherently anti-Semitic and a call for genocide. Nor, given the Hamas atrocities of October 7th, and the wave of anti-Semitic attacks around the world since then, should such concerns be merely dismissed. Indeed, the slogan does inherently challenge the precepts of Zionism and the moribund dogma of a two-state solution. In episode 199 of the Counter Vortex podcast, your ranter, Bill Weinberg, that's me, <clears throat> urges that it is incumbent upon activists to articulate a vision of a single secular state with equal rights for all in historic Palestine. While this may seem utopian, clarity on this question will make us more tactically effective in advancing the urgent immediate demand, a ceasefire in Gaza. You can listen on Patreon, patreon.com slash countervortex. And while you're there, please subscribe. Also check out our sibling website, New Jewish Resistance, for a proudly Jewish anti-Zionist perspective on Gaza and the question of Palestine generally. Fighting Zionism and anti-Semitism, defending pan-Semitic unity, newjewishresistance.org. 
and do follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. And please join us next week for the Counter Vortex.